name is Guy Yehuda. I'm uh, a clarinet player, and I'm professor of clarinet at Michigan State University and also the principal clarinetist of the Lansing Symphony. And uh, when I'm not teaching, I'm traveling a lot and performing as soloist and German musician. And today we're here in Belgium. Yeah, this piece that I played uh, today uh, was written by Paul uh, Ben Chaim, uh, who is considered to be one of the most important Israeli composers from the founders' generations, let's say. And he immigrated from Germany to, to Israel, changed his name to Ben Chaim, and was very prolific in establishing uh, this founders' generation of composers in Israel that tried to get some inspiration from folk music that was around that area. Uh, so from um, Arabs that were living in the country and some shepherd songs and things like that and incorporated that in his music and they call it this mid-eastern influence in, uh, in western music. Um, and so this piece he was written in 1941 and um, was uh, very successful but kind of got neglected through the years. And in the 60s, he um, revamped the last movement and expanded it and named it Pastoral Verrier for string orchestra, a harp and clarinet. And that's a very, uh, quite known piece, a beautiful, beautiful piece. And that, that's actually the first piece I played by this composer, by Paul Ben Chaim, uh, many years ago. I played it with an orchestra. And I knew of the quintet. And I haven't played it, and I said, I'm, I'm going to go back to it at some point. And then when the clarinet conference uh, idea came in Belgium, I thought, well, what can be something unique? And, and since this piece is almost unknown now, uh, it is published, but uh, a lot of people just don't know about it. I, th I, th I thought, well, it's a great opportunity to, to bring it, and to, uh, I think it, this piece deserves to be known much more. I think, yeah, I think you're right on point here. I think this piece uh, is not necessarily a virtuosic piece per se. I mean, there are some sections that are very exciting, um, but it's really about transparency of, of sounds and colors. And of course, the clarinet blends so well with strings. Uh, and the clarinet has the ability to, to really mask itself within the context uh, of the strings. and and really create a beautiful, beautiful layers of colors. And that piece is really written like that. It's, it's really with the spirit of Debussy, um, with uh, how it's harmonized, the voicing is very peculiar. So the clarinet doesn't always go and play the top line, the soloistic. Many times it's like an inner voice uh, or accompanying, even the bass line is, is being given to the clarinet when the cello is actually high. So that creates a very, very beautiful uh, coloration of this piece. And I think that draws me quite a lot to, um, to pieces like that. I'm playing a lot of virtuos, a lot of kind of... Well, this is why I'm playing, you know, this clarinet. What drew me to the recital model is the flexibility of, of this horn and its ability to really create a huge range of colors. And for something like that, um, and it's really necessary for the clarinet to kind of meander between the strings and assume different roles. And there, 
Recital is really giving you this ability of blending extremely well with the strings and emerging when there's a need uh, for that. Um, I think also the fact that the recital model has this dark, a bit slightly more dark uh, nuance to its color works very well within that context. Um, so I always love, you know, whether playing Mozart Brahms or Ben Chaim, uh, I think it's, it's really, um, it's my first choice of, of playing a, a horn like that. And of course, not only when I play in the orchestra, I'm playing still the, the recital, so it works very well in the orchestral context. But this is why I love it so much, because it's so versatile that you can really project with this horn and go to the end of the hall in a 3,000 seat hall when I'm playing on orchestra, or when I'm playing as a, as a soloist, as a concerto. Uh, but also when you play with a chair music setting and extremely soft and very transparent, this clarinet is really enabling you to do whatever your, your heart's wish. I think the first time, you know, if this clarinet is sitting among other clarinets, by visual inspection already you see something is weird a bit because it's, it's thick and the diameter is thicker than all of the other clarinets because the inner bore is actually very, um, very narrow. So the wood resonates quite a lot um, and I think for clarinet players who are a bit uh, worried about it when they pick it up and they feel, oh, that, that feels a, f a bit weird. I say approach it with an open mind um, because you'll be surprised of what this, this horn can do. Uh, once you get used to the, and it doesn't take long, it doesn't take long to get used to, this. there's a bit of an added weight, that's correct, uh, but I think in turn what you get is, is extremely valuable. Um, the color, the projection, the, the, the almost human quality, human voice quality that this instrument has, I think it's unparalleled. Uh, that's why, that, that's the first thing that drew me when I was a kid and I, I, I tried this clarinet. The, the, the story goes that I was you know, back in Israel and my clarinet, uh, I need to repair it for a week. And then, um, and that was in 1988. And they gave me a replacement clarinet. And from all clarinet, you would think, what would they give me a replacement was a recital. Uh, and you can imagine that a kid that is playing on, you know, the normal clarinet, it was a buffet back then, and then suddenly I get this, and it's, what is that? But I had to, to play it for a week, and I played it, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And that stuck in my mind for years. And when time came and I, I picked up my Selmer clarinets, I went directly to this guy and, and never looked back. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a really, really unique clarinet. You know, I've been working with Selmer for, I don't know, past 20 years. Um, I think it's, uh, it's really, it's a privilege to be associated with Selmer Paris. I think it's, um, it's a very welcoming uh, company. It's a family. And, and I feel like I'm part of a family. And I think uh, from creating models of clarinet to marketing to uh, helping uh, artists to, to um, promoting music ev all over the world. Uh, I think Selmer Paris has this um, notion of how to bring everyone together, which I think is very, very important, especially nowadays. Um, it's really, it's, I think it's remarkable 
um, the, the innovations that the company is doing with, with sounds and, and, and clarinets, and the fact that um, the company is listening to its artists and working with artists. And, and I, I, I felt very uh, honored to, to work on the privilege and on, on the recital models with you guys. And uh, I think it's, um, I, I think it's, a, it's a great relationship that I feel I, I belong to.